I am Pastor Frank Bray. I'm so honored and delighted to be able to take a few moments and share with you. I'm delighted to have our audience to view this wonderful telecast. Of course, I have a special guest with me today, Dr. Chris Davis. He is a professor at Memphis Theological Seminary, who is also the pastor of the St. Paul Church here in the city of Memphis. We're so honored to have Pastor Davis, uh, Professor Davis, Dr. Davis, uh, to share with us this uh, in this setting. Of course, we are concerned about expository preaching, one of the great um, arms of biblical study to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. And of course, he is an expositor. And I thank God for him. He's a wonderful preacher in the Lord. Uh, I want our audience to welcome uh, this great preacher, Dr. Chris Davis, here with us. Dr. Davis, I am so delighted to have you to share with us. I have watched you from afar. Uh, I has, have admired you. Uh, you was able to take a church that Memphis called a trouble church. Uh, <laughs> and you took it and you has handled it with such ease. And uh, the members appear to love you, love you dearly. Apparently, you, has been, you have been a fit for that church. Uh, you bless the church, and I watch you on Sunday as you share the Word of God. What a powerful preacher you are. We're so glad to have you. Thank you, Dr. Gray. The pleasure is all mine. Thank Honored you. to be on the broadcast with you. Thank you so <laughs> much, Dr. Listen, we want to spend just a few moments uh, just kind of dealing with the Word of God. Okay. And I'll let you kind of lead off and share with us, because you are a professor, uh, and you know how to do it, how to rightly divide the Word of Truth. And we'll just kind of dialogue just a little bit because there's so many people, even now, that have been Christians a long time, still don't know how to study the Word of God. Right. And there are some pastors that mean well, uh, that may not have the academic training that they should have to be able to rightly divide the Word of Truth. Uh, according to James chapter 3, verse 1, those of us that teach the Word, God holds us more accountable for rightly dividing the word than anyone else. So would you just share with us, if you will, just a little bit? Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, much like yourself, I, uh, I have a passion yeah. for the uh, for the word. In fact, that while I enjoy doing other things, nothing excites me like unearthing those those nuggets yeah. within the uh, within the biblical text. Yeah. In fact, um, I think the Lord gives all of us specific assignments. Uh, like the way I mean, I'm convinced. That my assignment in the body of Christ, not only as a local church pastor, but also as a seminary instructor, yeah. is to equip students with the tools to take ancient texts yeah. and move into a contemporary context. All right. Now, that causes some people alarm, because when you talk like that, of course, that opens you up for stuff like proof texting and eisegesis and yeah. so forth. But I think there was a thorough way to, to get it done. Yeah. Um, I think the simplest way, in my opinion, to... Teach people how to do expository preaching is to raise essentially. I like to think three questions. Okay. I like to look at the world behind the text. Okay. Look at the world of the text, yeah. and then look at the world in front of the text. Yeah. yeah. That that tends to be my approach in terms. I like to look at the the culture, the uh, the socioeconomic status. Look at some of the mores, the taboos in that particular context yeah. because it's difficult to help people understand in a 21st century context yeah. what was going on in the first century world if you're not clear on it. Exactly. So after I deal with that, then I'd like to deal with what's going on in the immediate text itself. Okay. And after I've wrestled with that, then move to the world in front of the text. Yeah. Now that I've understood it, what are the implications for me yeah. in this current age? Wow. And, I think, and I, for me, that tends to be sort of the best way yeah. to approach the biblical text. Well, God bless you. Listen, I am so delighted again just to share just a word with you about what is getting ready to take place in the city of Memphis. It is our 13th year that we will be celebrating this expository preaching church growth enhancement conference that will take place here on the campus of the New Salem Church family. We have so many guests that will be coming, sharing with us, and just any one of these guests would be enough for us to come and to stay all the week. Listen at some of the people that will be here. 
Dr. Jasper Williams from Atlanta, Georgia will be here. Uh, Dr. Arthur Jackson from Miami, Florida. Dr. Jamal Bryant will be here. Of course, Dr. Tellis Chapman will be here. John Adolph will be here. Uh, Torlin Morgan will be here. And then we're going to honor the president of a National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, Dr. Jerry Young. We're excited about what God is getting ready to do here on this spot of ground. My goodness, I can't wait. Circle your calendar for that time. You can call our church and register now, 1-800-375-4007. Or go to GodIsGoodMinistry.net. You can register now for this awesome situation. Be blessed. Pastor Ray, as everybody knows, is awesome. And all the speakers are wonderful. And just come, 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 join us and you will be blessed. Uh, you are unusual because many of our uh, younger pastors, uh, I'm going to say younger pastors, uh, that's that uh, 45 group down, uh, want to get things in such a hurry, many of them, not all, but want to get things in such a hurry until they deal more with inspirational preaching mm -hmm. instead of biblical preaching. What would be your advice to younger pastors and younger preachers to get themselves and equip themselves to have a foundation that will last because eventually the people that they preach to will start looking for what they have said in the Word. Uh, how, what, what is your approach to that? I think, again, you cannot overemphasize the significance of a systematic approach to the Word. But beyond that, <clears throat> I think what I've enjoyed is I think people tend to resonate with two things around the text, or two things around preaching, mm -hmm. and that is, if you challenge them to look again yeah. at their familiar story that they feel like they know, yeah. they've heard all there is to hear about it, yeah. if you can challenge them to look at it again and hear it differently, yeah. I think that, that sparks some interest. Or, if you lift up an obscure passage yeah. that has been there all along, even when you read the text, people are like, what is that? Where did that come from? Yeah. And help them move through it systematically. Eventually, we begin to train their appetite to a place where they come expecting to hear something different. For instance, if we look at the story of Jonah, yeah. if I said to the average preacher, I'm a preacher of Jonah story, yeah. and I said to him that uh, my subject was going to be the consequences of a bad decision, uh -huh. well, immediately, he feels like he knows what I'm going to say, and so does the congregation. Yeah. I mean, if you've been in Sunday school at least three times, yeah. you know the story of Jonah. Yeah. And, of course, everybody immediately said, well, the bad decision was the attempt to run from God. Yeah. Well, my question then becomes, why should I get up on a Sunday morning, get dressed, drive across town, and listen to you say that? Uh -huh. I can get that in Sunday school. Yeah. So now the question becomes, well, if that's not it, then what is it? Well, I've got an 18-year-old, a 15-year-old, and a 12-year-old at home, yeah. brought up in the church. Yeah. And even brought up in the church, I'm not sure they can wrap their mind around this idea yeah. of a grown man yeah. being swallowed by a fish, yeah. living in his belly three days, yeah. being spat out on dry ground. Uh -huh. And I understand that. Uh -huh. So if they're going to struggle with that, then what can we offer them from that text? Yeah. Well, consider this, if we know the story. Yeah. Well, the conditions were nice. Mm -hmm. captain and the crew had loaded up everything they needed on. Yeah. All of a sudden, Jonah gets on board. They set sail. Yeah. Almost immediately, okay. they find themselves in a storm because Jonah's on board. Yeah. What about the bad decision mm -hmm. of letting the wrong somebody on your boat? Yeah. While you may not be able to wrap your mind around this man being followed up by a, swift, a fish, all of us who've lived longer than 15 minutes yeah. have experienced allowing the wrong somebody in our circle, yeah. and now you got a storm. Exactly. And now you just walk through it. Mm -hmm. They say they throw their wares overboard. Yeah. Stuff they needed for success on a journey. Mm -hmm. Because of this person, yeah. they throw it overboard. Yeah. What does that look like? You used to come to church before you met them. Now you don't come. <laughs> your self-respect, your dignity, your pride. Yeah. All the stuff that used to be important, yeah. you threw it overboard wow. because of the person you let on your boat. Oh, See, at that point, yeah. we're no longer talking about a man and a fish. Yeah. We're talking about a practical application 
to the text. To the text. And I think that resonates with people. Wow. If we look at the story of David. Okay. David becomes the first king of the unified kingdom yeah. of Israel. Yeah. David is now ready to establish Jerusalem yeah. as the capital city. Yeah. But the Jezebites have established a stronghold. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> they're in a position at, from, in terms of the military strategizing where well, they've got the advantage. Mm -hmm. They're up on a hill. Yeah. David is down in the valley. Yeah. They're mocking David. They yeah. said, there's nothing he can do. Uh -huh. If you try to come up the front, we got him. Come yeah. up the back, we got him. Up yeah. the side, we got him. Yeah. So even David's army is saying, what are we going to do? Wow. One of the King James Version makes mention about David decides to go up to water shell. Mm -hmm. Now, if all you got is the King James Version, that doesn't mean anything to you. Yeah. But if you go back and you look at the study of the first century world, this idea of the world behind the text, okay. we know that they did not have the benefit of indoor plumbing, yeah. uh, septic tank. Mm -hmm. In the first century world, cities were built on a hill, not only in terms of protecting the city, mm -hmm. but they would build these huge trenches yeah. so that the solid waste could run out of the city. Yeah. Well, the Jezebites erroneously assumed mm -hmm. that no self-respecting king uh -huh. would come through the trench where the solid waste flowed out of the city. Uh -huh. But David said to the men, that's the way we're going. Wow. And I jokingly say to people, what did I notice? God had already given him the city, mm -hmm. but he's got to deal with the enemy. The only way to get there is to go through the trench of the solid waste. So I often tell people, even if the Lord has given it to you, sometimes you got to deal with some in order to get it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's right. That's right. You have to do it. That's right. But if I've not read anything about the first century world yeah. to understand the layout of the city, mm -hmm. then I can't fully wrap my mind around mm -hmm. what's going on exactly. in that text. Exactly. So what I think is as well is that you must cut out a certain amount of time oh, absolutely. every day uh, to prepare yourself to study the Word of God. Right. Nothing beat devotion. Absolutely. Uh, with a, a preacher, a teacher, that you have to spend some quality time. Um, I hold that the morning is the best time. Uh, your mind is more refreshed in the morning, uh, and you're more able to comprehend uh, in the morning than what you can at night. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when you study at night, many times you lose what you have picked up in your sleep. But in the morning, it's refreshing time, a time that you can really spend and rightly prepare yourself to study the Word of God. I think another thing that, that young preacher pastors can do, particularly pastors can do, yeah. that will help them in their preaching, I made a conscious decision yeah. to fall in love with Bible study. Yeah. I often say, if the Lord came back today and said to me, Chris Davis, you can only do one service a week, yeah. what's it going to be? Yeah. Let me do the Bible study. Well, I recognize, of course, a uh, person like yourself who travels a great deal, yeah. preaching around the country, yeah. that's not always the easiest thing to do. Yeah. But I'm talking about somebody sitting in the house watching cartoons <laughs> that could be teaching yeah. the, uh, the Bible study. Because yeah. the reality is, yeah. the story doesn't change. Exactly. So if I commit myself to doing a thorough weekly Bible study. Yeah. I've done the background work, I've done the research, yeah. so I've got all of the information I need right. to craft right. a responsible sermon. Wonderful. So instead of working hard, yeah. now I work smart. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, again, I think the best thing that ever happened to me in my own preaching ministry yeah. is falling in love with Bible study. One of the things that used to happen years ago that the older minister was not interested in his members spend a lot of time learning much right. because they believed that if they learned too much, they couldn't handle them. Uh, but I discovered that ignorance is destructive. Absolutely. Uh, that uh, once people are prepared and rightly understand the Word of God, they're much easier to get along with and then go out and find other people to be a part of the ministry. My title at Memphis Theological Seminary is Assistant Professor of pastoral ministry and yeah. preaching. Yeah. I love that because not only do I get to teach preaching, yeah. but I also get a chance to look at pastoral ministry. Yeah. And I tell all of my students, you owe it to yourself yeah. to encourage your people to come to Bible studies exactly. because you can only pastor the folks that you can teach. Yeah, exactly. And they won't come and learn. Yeah. The best you can ever hope for is to be their preacher. Exactly. But you'll never be their pastor. <laughs> So we have a vested interest in them coming up. But I think the reason a lot of younger clergy uh -huh. don't embrace expository preaching yeah. is because, number one, they don't recognize the practical benefits. Yeah. Not only does it help them, but it helps the members become students of the Word. Exactly. But the other thing is, you don't have to do it necessarily the way it's been packaged. For instance, I consider myself to be 
a narrative expositor. Okay. I, I think, um, it, it, it by and large, in African American churches, black churches, we like stories. Yeah. And, if, and if that's what the people like, then that's just the reality of it. Yeah. But if we can do the exegetical work yeah. and then present it in story form, much like you do, yeah. people resonate yeah. with narrative yeah. expository preaching. So you're doing the expository work, yeah. but it's been packaged in the form of a story, exactly. and it flows for the people. It does. It and does. it works. It does. It works. It works. So. Well, God bless you. Listen, I am so delighted again just to share just a word with you about what is getting ready to take place in the city of Memphis. It is our 13th year that we will be celebrating this expository preaching church growth enhancement conference that will take place here on the campus of the New Salem Church family. We have so many guests that will be coming, sharing with us, and just any one of these guests would be enough for us to come and to stay all the week. Listen, and some of the people that will be here. The Jasper Williams from Atlanta, Georgia will be here. Uh, Dr. Arthur Jackson from Miami, Florida. Dr. Jamal Bryant will be here. Of course, Dr. Tellis Chapman will be here. John Adolph will be here. Uh, Toilin Morgan will be here. And then we're going to honor the president of a National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, Dr. Jerry Young. We're excited about what God is getting ready to do here on this spot of ground. My goodness, I can't wait. Circle your calendar for that time. You can call our church and register now, 1-800-375-4007. Or go to GodIsGoodMinistry.net. You can register now for this awesome situation. Be blessed. Pastor Ray, as everybody knows, is awesome, and all the speakers are wonderful, and just come, come, come join us, and you will be blessed. So, one of the things I try to do and with expository preaching is for the last 30 or 40 years, I know I'm going to take one verse okay. and spin that one verse through. And it's for my own personal study because whenever I take one verse and I spend 30 or 40 hours in preparing that one verse, it will forever be there. Right. And I can pull it up at any time. At any given day. You know, and every word has something. For instance, James. One and one is a James, a servant of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. That's my manuscript. I don't have to have it before me because I've already studied the word. I take James and, and spend time with him because there were three James in the Bible. He doesn't tell us which, which James it was. Then I start my elimination process to figure out which James the pensman had in mind. And then it tells who he is. He said he's a servant. Do laws in the Greek, which means slave. Right. But it's not just a slave, he's a bond slave, which meant he had an opportunity over a period of years to be set free, but he chose to remain a slave. And then the verse tells us who he belonged to. James is servant of God. You know, they are in the Greek. And then it said, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which means I belong to the Father and the Son. And the Son. Uh, it was the Father that made me, the Son that bought me. And then he tells who he's writing to, to the 12 tribes. And then he said where they are. They're scattered. Scattered the brother. You know, diaspora. Dios means through. Spiro means to soak, you know. And then he says greetings, which means caro in the Greek. It means rejoice. It means the fact that, that you don't rejoice because you're in crisis, but rejoice in spite of. The word actually means kick your heels up. <laughs> and so, so I take a passage and I do word for word for it, just for that reason. For instance, in Jonah that you just mentioned, uh, verse 3 says, verse 1 says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness have come up before me. Then I take verse 3, But Jonah rose to flee spontaneity uh, from the present separation uh, uh, of the Lord went down. I talk about falling. Uh, to Nineveh, and then he went down to Joppa, 
He found the ship, which means success. He found what he was looking for, not what he needed. You know, he paid that his fare, which means spending. That means that whenever you do wrong, you're gonna pay for it every day. You may not, you may not pay for it today. You know, I heard a preacher say that that in this life you're gonna pay now and play later, or you're gonna play now and pay later. Sooner or later, it's gonna happen. So I take a word, a passage. And I deal with it word for word. I do it from my own personal study because I can get more out of the passage when I take it from that angle. And it lengthens your preaching life. It does. It lengthens your, and of course, <clears throat> I'm always concerned when I hear older pastors say, you know, I've been preaching 40 years, 50 years. Mm -hmm. I've preached the whole Bible. I'm sorry. And I think to myself, you can preach Genesis 1-1 and preach a whole year. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Sure preach a, but if people, they would be amazed in terms of I often find myself in Bible study, even in my classes, mm. asking students pertinent questions yeah. that I hope sets off the light bulb in terms of their preaching. Yeah. Yeah. We know God is a God of, God's got a family, God affirms that and so forth. Yet he turns around and says to um, Abraham, mm. leave your family. Leave your family. Now that's not consistent uh -huh. with who we've known God to be. Yeah. So the logical question becomes, why would God say that? Wow. But then, of course, if we go back and backtrack, uh -huh. Abraham should have been to the promised land long before now. His father set out. Yes. But he, when he arrived at a suitable place, yes. he says, this is good enough. Yes. We're going to camp out here. Yeah. I, so I argue that the reason God says that is you can't have too many people with you That's right. when the Lord is giving you a destination. Because yes. if you've got the wrong folks with you and you get to a suitable place, they'll say, there's no point in going any further. <laughs> this is good enough. <laughs> But we have to begin to ask the logical question, yeah. if this is not consistent with the nature and character of God, yeah. why would God say it? Yeah. And then it opens us up to other preaching possibilities. Yeah. yeah, meaning that God put some people in your life for an event. Uh, uh, Abraham's father was there for an event. Absolutely. Put some in your life for an era. Lot, which was his nephew, was there for an era. He placed some in there for an eternity. Only God can stick with him. I hear preaching in that. Yeah, I hear preaching in that. If you're watching the broadcast, you need to preach that. <laughs> Which is the way that you would approach a text. Absolutely. You look at those things. You look at you know Abraham got in trouble with God because he took his father beyond where God had told him to go. He told him to leave his family, That's leave right. his kin, but he decided to take his father and his nephew, and both got him in trouble. Well, it's always dangerous when you're smarter than God. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's always dangerous. And and that's one of the things. I And I, I enjoy so much studying the Word of God. It means so much to me. That's why we're trying here at Salem, each year we bring to Memphis uh, a conference, the first week of July. You shared with us. I, uh, I had the privilege of sharing in the conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a wonderful conference. We bring in some of the greatest minds across the country uh, from all segments of the Christian family. Uh, they come to this church and we share with it, and it means so much to us and so much to others because I'm blessed myself as pastor of the church. I need to be motivated right. and inspired. And so we bring some of the great minds. Always the first week of July, the 6th through the 9th, through the 9th, that we bring these pastors and preachers and lay leaders here. And we have just a wonderful, just an awesome time. And see, one of the things that I appreciate about your conference, Dr. Reyes, again, unfortunately, yeah. many of our best and brightest yeah. have not yet developed the discipline yeah. of writing. Yeah, exactly. Therefore, if we don't get an opportunity to hear them in person, yeah. my fear becomes so much of that will be lost yeah. when they make their transition. Yeah, exactly. And so that's one of the things that I celebrate about the conference yeah. is some of the best and brightest exegetical minds from around the country yeah. are gathered together under this one roof yes, for the benefit of those yes, who at least come and listen. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I am so honored again. We're going to pause and break just for a moment. I thank you so much, Dr. Davis, for just being with us and sharing. Wow, what an awesome mind and gift to God you are. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ray. Bless you. Well, God bless you. Listen, I am so delighted again just to share just a word with you about what is getting ready to take place in the city of Memphis. It is our 13th year that we will be celebrating this expository preaching church growth enhancement conference. 
that will take place here on the campus of the New Salem Church family. We have so many guests that will be coming, sharing with us, and just any one of these guests would be enough for us to come and to stay all the week. Listen, and some of the people that will be here. The Jasper Williams from Atlanta, Georgia will be here. Uh, Dr. Arthur Jackson from Miami, Florida. Dr. Jamal Bryant will be here. Of course, Dr. Tellis Chapman will be here. John Adolph will be here. Uh, Torlin Morgan will be here. And then we're going to honor the president of a National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, Dr. Jerry Young. We're excited about what God is getting ready to do here on this spot of ground. My goodness, I can't wait. Circle your calendar for that time. You can call our church and register now, 1-800-375-4007. Or go to GodIsGoodMinistry.net. You can register now for this awesome situation. Be blessed. Pastor Ray, as everybody knows, is awesome. And all the speakers are wonderful. And just come, 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 join us and you will be blessed. I'm so honored again, Dr. Davis, to have you to share with us. My God, this has been just a wonderful setting with you. I praise God for you. Listen, I just appreciate the invite. All I ask you is for a copy yeah. of the broadcast on DVD. So when I tell folk I know you, I say, look, I got the other guests. <laughs> well, we, will, we will make sure that you have a copy of this. God bless you, bless you Pastor. We bless thank you. you so much. We pray that you live a long time, that God will continue to bless you and your ministry, and I'm excited about what God is doing in your life. Thank you. And let me say this, and I say this with tremendous sincerity. Yes, sir. Bless God for you in the conference. Thank you, sir. The reality is, to whom much is given, yes, sir. much is required. Yeah. The easiest thing to do was yeah. for you to simply say, yeah. I, I've, I've got mine, I've yeah. made my mark, let yeah. others do likewise. Yeah. But for you to be intentional yeah. in attempting yeah. to raise up the next generation, Thank you, sir. which will ultimately benefit our churches yes, sir. and benefit the body of Christ. Thank Certainly you to be commended Thank you, for the work that you're doing. So Thank God bless you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And audience, thank you so much again for such a wonderful audience. We have enjoyed being with you and sharing with you today. We thank God for you, for what you mean to the body of Christ and to the believers across the country. And of course, we expected to see the nation to come down to share with us. From July the 6th through the 9th, we're waiting with anticipation. You can always call our 1-800 number uh, and share with us, make your request. You can go to God is Good Ministry, uh, dot, uh, net, and you can place your order online to order uh, or to register for the conference that will take place here on these Hollywood grounds. We love you so much and we thank you for being such a wonderful audience. And remember this, God is good. That's right, all the time. To order your copy of today's message on CD, DVD, or cassette, visit our website at GodIsGoodMinistries.net or by calling 1-800-375-4007 or you may write us at 2237 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee, 38114. Oh, God is good.